Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Uh, definitely uh, today's table talk is uh, going to be sensitive but it's going to be important because I am a suicide survivor and it's uh, important that I talk about it because I don't want people to think about it as being such a touchy subject that I'm afraid to address the issue. I'm, uh, I want to address the issue because at one point I had a turning point. At one point I wanted to die and not live, but then at one point I had a turning point and I wanted to live and not die. So I want to talk about it and uh, always, always shoot me back emails, uh, oh, uh, comments, what do you feel that we can talk about. But going forward, I want to talk about it and not hide anymore. I don't want to hide anymore because I did attempt suicide uh, some years ago, a couple of years ago, and uh, at that time I was in so much pain and things uh, in my my mind was, wasn't was going the way I wanted to go. Uh, I felt like I wasn't being loved. I, I was so depressed, I mean deeply, deeply depressed to the point where I was strategically making plans to die. And we'll talk about how depression and deep depression carries different symptoms and it carries different weights of, uh, of symptoms and uh, I talk about it in the book the book will be out in I think the book will be in Barnes and Noble in December and uh, it's titled guess what's in my purse thriving with mental illness because it definitely is uh, the deep depression is like a tornado and it sucks you in and uh, the end of that tornado is definitely destroying yourself and others. But this table talk is talking about uh, uh, suicide surviving. I'm definitely a suicide survivor. So the first thing I wanted to bring to uh, bring to the table is suicide. When you think about suicide, what is it? Suicide. For me, when I think about suicide, suicide, death is final. There is no do-overs, there is no coming back from death. Death is final. So in my mind, when I wanted to leave the, this world and I wanted to uh, take my life, it was because I wanted to stop the pain. I wanted to get rid of the pain. But what am I leaving? If I leave this world, what am I leaving behind? And I thought about that. So I said, okay, so in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, death is final. So I'm not coming back and there's no do-overs. So what am I leaving behind? And when you think of, when I think about it for me, you know, I had children and at the time I had, uh, I had a partner and I had family members around me. So they lose the joy of my vision. And I had to stop and really absorb that. I wrote that down. I said, you're right. They lose the joy of my vision of what I see the future with me and them put together, uh, our future holidays look like, our future vacations look like, our future period, that goes away. If I would have success successfully uh, uh, committed suicide, if I had a successfully committed suicide, there wouldn't be a next page or a next chapter for me. It wouldn't be any visions out of my head sharing with family members or friends it would have been nothing so that that would have been out the door that's one thing so you wouldn't have had the joy of experiencing any visions or any uh any uh any happiness coming from me that's one i wrote that down and this the next one i wrote was you don't get a do-over so if I don't get a do-over, so that means I'm going to miss 
my daughter's graduation from college. Both of my girls graduated from college. I'm going to miss that. Both of my boys, their first uh, paycheck from their jobs, they immediately went into the workforce. I'm going to miss that. I was going to miss them. They wanted to have a birthday party for my first granddaughter. I was going to miss that. There's no do-overs and I couldn't have there is no rewind for me to say, oh, play that back. I would like to see her fall in the skating rink. Play that back. I can't do that. And I had to remember, the legacy dies with me. The legacy of, in my mind, I, I dreamed of having a business, a small business, and letting that business grow, and letting that business uh, be family owned, and then share that business with my kids, and let them take over when I get 90, and let them hand it down to my grandkids, and when they get old, and just watch everybody grow old, and have stories to tell how the store changed, and how, how we started using uh, money and from money to credit cards and from credit cards to chips in the hand how digital uh, The digital age came back. I wouldn't have been able to do any of that. This is what you lose when you take your life and I couldn't I couldn't think about it then because I was letting pain take over I was letting pain have a uh, uh, more control over my thinking instead of me balancing things out and stopping and saying, hey, the pain is temporary. It goes away. But your legacy, if you, if you decide to die today, your legacy, you cannot review and rewind and get put it back on the table to talk about it. You can't do all any of that. That's, that's a done deal. So I wanted to bring that to a topic too for us to discuss because death is final. And I have to bring that to the community too. I don't wanna lose the benefit of your vision shared with the public. The benefit of your vision shared with the community. You might be the next big thing. And I won't get to see that if you decide to do harm yourself, you think taking your life is a good idea. It's not a good idea. I've been there. It's not. It's not even worth it. The pain is temporary. It's If it gets to the point where you need to reach out, reach out. You know what I did? I did an inpatient stay at a hospital where I can slow down and I can make sense of things, and I can start putting things together. And they had to give me a little bit of medicine management so I can, I can balance out. But when you get to the point where it means your life and your legacy and your future, and uh, you wanna have children one day, and you wanna have a marriage one day, and a beautiful relationship one day, hey, medicine management is a better choice as opposed to destroying yourself or destroying others. I just want to put that out there. I'm not afraid to put that out there. I decided to do a turning point when my clinician partnered with me and said she will partner with me and together we will carve out a future, a vision, a plan, Whatever that looks like, my kids get to enjoy it, my grandkids get to enjoy it, the community gets to enjoy it, the world gets to enjoy it, everybody gets to enjoy the vision that I want to share because I'm still here and I decide to stick around just to see how it looks at the end. I would actually love to see a car fly in the air, just out of, you know, just as a joke, just to see, just to see uh, innovations change in our lives. You know, just, we'll never experience that if we just decide so quickly. Don't be so hasty to turn the page and say, oh my goodness, uh, death is the 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 uh, the next best thing for me. 
Death will never be a good thing. It will never be a good choice. And I, I also have to think about the additional tragedies that I cause if I decide to do those things. If I decide to hurt myself and others, look at the tragedies. I, I create a domino effect. I hurt my kids, then I hurt my partner, then I hurt my grandkids, and then who knows, they grow up with a trauma in their life and they can't cope. And then here it goes, I create a suicide domino effect and I didn't benefit anything. There goes the legacy again. It goes down the drain. So no, I definitely want to have a, a conversation about it. It's a, it's a, a touchy subject and it's a very, it's a uh, kind of scary, but I'm not afraid of it. I'm not afraid of it because I chose life and I want you to choose life and come over, talk, we'll listen, we'll offer suggestions. We have clinicians, clinicians subscribe to our, our channel so we can get the textbook side as well as the patient's point of view. We are a team. We do, we do things together. And I definitely wanted to bring that point. And I have a, just for, a, for information, there's nothing wrong with medicine being applied to your components to keep you out of balance. Because I do medicine, but I do medicine, I do a little bit of medicine, I do a little bit of uh, psychotherapy, which is my uh, clinician, and then I do applied uh, antidotes to my uh, to my uh, triggers and my episodes and I do execution I do execution if you don't execute what we're uh, what we're implementing and what you're implementing for yourself you can personalize it towards yourself if you don't execute it then it's so non-effective it's not going to help at all if you don't get up and you start putting things into motion and start moving and start seeing the evidence of your hard work, you'll be patting yourself on the back. I'm sure of that. So definitely, let's talk about it. This is our, one of our table talks that uh, it was kind of sensitive and kind of uh, chalky, but I wanted to talk about it. And I definitely want to keep, uh, keep open one of the other things about deep depression and depression. Now, through my self-assessment, I did a meditative day and I discovered that deep depression and depression have different symptoms and they carry different weights to the symptoms. And it's for some reason, depression always sink you lower and lower into deep depression as if it wants you into another stage of depression. It could, because if you notice, if you do self-assessments on yourself, if you notice how your, your depression starts off sad and start off probably isolated and self-loathing, for me, that's, that's how it starts for me. But then it doesn't stay that way. It always sinks lower into suicidal ideations, it sinks lower into uh, strategic harming, like I want to harm myself, and it sinks lower to lower, and before you know it, you're back to wanting to harm yourself and others. So I, when I discovered that, I said, I'm going to put that down for table talks because that's awful. That's off. You know, that's something that hasn't been really identified to the point where nobody's putting it on the table to talk about. So let's talk about it. Those are, you know, when you, you put it together, you just say depression or you say major depression or you say massive depression, but you never say depression or deep depression because both of them are different and I want to uh, from now on I think I'm going to go and I'm going to start saying both of them are different as far as I'm concerned because that's the way 
uh, it presents itself in, in my life and that's the way it presents itself as far as the symptoms in my life as well too. So let's talk about it. Don't forget to su subscribe. Uh, until next time, stay healthy.